Hey there guys, it's Metro, and today we're going to be finally getting to the tutorial on how to steal the opposing trainer's Pokemon and do this in a way that I've been calling the Team Rocket Run, essentially a run where we only use stolen Pokemon. Now before we get too uh, deep into this, I want to tell you that this does not work very well, and uh, I'm talking about working well for me. There's a lot of bugs if you've watched my live stream with it where you simply cannot catch some Pokemon unless you do some really odd things. Uh, and I've spoken to the creator of both Pokemon Rejuvenation and Reborn about this. They don't have any answers. And I also spoke to the creator of Pokemon Essentials and he was quite dismissive of me doing this in the first place. But also just said that the script is buggy and it is not meant to function in this way. So be happy that it works at all. Uh, so maybe some smart people out there will be able to remedy these problems, but uh, we will not focus on that. What we will focus on is how you are going to be able to set this up for yourself. I'm going to do this all in one take. So if you have any questions or if anything's confusing, just let me know. Otherwise, the first things you need to do, there's three things you're going to need to be able to do this, okay? Uh, RPG Maker XP, okay? That's the program that this game is made in and now will be edited in. If you don't have that, you can't even do this. Now, uh, it is something that you have to pay for. You can buy it on Steam or, I believe, from their website. Uh, it's relatively cheap. I think last time I looked at it, it was $25. Um, but you could also get a free trial, I'm fairly certain, if I remember correctly. You can get a free trial, and you can, if you only ever plan on doing this once, that's it. You don't ever need it again. You don't actually need it to actually play the game. You just need it to edit the game. So if for some reason you only ever want to do this once, just get the free trial, do it, and then that's that. You're ready to rock. Uh, other than that, you are going to need uh, Pokemon Essentials, I imagine. Uh, I, don't know, I don't think you need your own copy of it, but the reason it's important is because that's what the game is made in. So RPG Maker by itself is not... A functional product. It's not, uh, you're not able to play Pokemon games on it. Somebody created a pack of things called Pokemon Essentials that allows you to create and play Pokemon games through RPG Maker XP. So, more so, the third thing that you would need is all the files for whichever game you plan to play. So, uh, like I said, it's based on Essentials, so it's a good start, but I assume nobody actually plans on playing the game that comes as Essentials, which is just a tutorial game on how to make games. Uh, so, for example, I recently did Pokemon Rejuvenation, so I need everything that's in that folder plus the PBS files. Hopefully everybody understands what those are. Uh, unlike my previous tutorial, we aren't actually editing the save file this time. We're editing the actual game files. So it needs to be fully intact in order to actually play it. Previously, in the previous tutorial, what we were doing was we were editing the save. So we didn't even need a working PBS. As long as the game would load, you wouldn't even move your character. It didn't even matter if you were on the right maps. You can just edit the save using the debug feature and then transfer the save back over to the functioning game and play it through that. This is not going to work that way. You need to actually edit the game files in order to do this. So you do need the PBS. Cannot stress that enough. Uh, so, let's see. Amethyst, the creator of Pokemon Reborn, uh, gives those out without even asking on the website. There's a whole like a page on the FAQ about that. And Jan, the creator of Pokemon Rejuvenation, gave them to me via email. So, you know, if you want to play it, feel free to ask him. Maybe he'll do it. Uh, I've also gotten other games, PBS, like Pokemon Full Moon. I actually contacted the person, the people who made the game, and told them that what I was interested in doing, it was impossible without the PBS, and they acquiesced after, you know, some discussion. So just write a professional-style email, and, you know, maybe you'll get a response. So let's get into the actual tutorial now. So we're just going to do this on a, um, a stock version of Pokemon Essentials. Uh, we're not even going to worry about any games right now because they'll all function the exact same way. So it doesn't actually matter what you do. As long as you have the PBS files and follow these steps, it will work for you. Okay. So step one, editing the Pokeballs so that they can actually be thrown at the opposing team's Pokemon. So if you don't do this, the Pokeballs are just regular Pokeballs and they cannot possibly catch the Pokemon that you're trying to catch because it uses a feature called the Snag feature, making them Snag Balls. So we're going to go into the PBS, which hopefully you have, and go into Items, okay? And then when you open that, it's going to look like this. It's going to be all kinds of craziness, right? There's so many, so much text, you know, the first time you use Notepad or whatever, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So instead of just... You know, looking for whatever ball you want to edit, we're just going to go master. I'm going to use master ball, okay? Now, I haven't tried this with other balls, but I imagine 
there's no reason that you can't actually use any ball. Uh, but I use the Master Ball because I don't want to not catch the Pokemon, right? Like, I, I would cheat in Master Balls anyway, and I don't know how it would work if you threw the ball and didn't catch the Pokemon. In fact, I think there might be something in the game that makes Trainer's Pokemon harder to catch anyway. Uh, so I don't know about that. But regardless, that may not be the case. I would just stick with the Master Ball. Now, you see what we're after here is this last digit. Okay, I've highlighted it now. The last digit there, the four. We need to change that to three, the number three, okay? And the reason that we need to change that is because it, it is now a snag ball, okay? Uh, I don't know exactly what these correspond to, what one, two, three, four all correspond to, but the regular Pokeballs, as you see, are all four, right? Anything here is four. So you need to change it to three, and that means it's now going to function as a snag ball. And then obviously save that, make sure you've saved it, not overridden anything else. And that's step one done. Okay, so once again, PBS, items, control F to find master ball, change the last digit from four to three, and you now have a snag ball and a master ball. You could even create a new item if you prefer, but that complicates things because then you're gonna have to add animations, you know, like a, a texture and stuff for the actual, uh, the icon and stuff like that. So I would just change an existing ball and then you could edit in plenty of master balls with what I'm gonna tell you how to do later. Okay, so step two is now editing the script. Okay, so we're gonna go back and you're going to find this icon here. I have it highlighted on the screen the game RPG, uh, RPG XP project file, okay? You're going to open that and it's gonna open the game like this, okay? This is the RPG Maker UI and hopefully you'll familiarize yourself with it. But regardless, up here on the top there is script editor. This is what we're after and this is all you're gonna need for this tutorial. Everything else is for actually making a game but we're not doing that, we're simply editing the game. So. That's why you need Pokemon Essentials, because typically when you download Pokemon Rejuvenation, that file is not in there. So you need, you need to make a Pokemon Essentials folder and then drag the Pokemon Rejuvenation stuff. I'll show you that real quick. The Pokemon Rejuvenation stuff into the folder. So you see the difference here? Uh, the game is there, but not the actual uh, RPG Maker project fi file, which is down here, you see? So you would drag all of these things onto that, and then you would have that, okay? So anyway, uh, once you open the game, uh, go to the script editor, okay? Now you're going to scroll through all of these on the left here. As you see, I'm scrolling through them, and I'm looking for one called Pokebattle underscore battle. Make sure you have the right one. If you don't, it's not going to be there, okay? Okay. And now we're looking for, on this, line 138. It will not be the same for you. I mean, maybe it will, but it would be probably very unlikely, okay? Uh, because a lot of fan games edit these, this script set, okay? So you need to find this line here. If you can't find it, just go uh, control F in here and type in snag ball. There's only four or five options. You could edit other things that involve snag balls too, but for the scope of this video, this is all we need to do, okay? This is how it's going to be edited, right? You're going to change it, let me pull this up here. You're going to change it to make it look like this, okay? So the only difference there is uh, we're getting rid of the um, quotation, or not the quotation, the parentheses. Uh, you're getting rid of the parentheses after you delete Battler is Shadow. So this is you have to delete this because it's making it so you could actually throw a snag ball at Shadow Pokemon. But we don't want to do that. We want to throw it at every Pokemon, okay? So we can throw snag balls now after we get rid of this at every single Pokemon. And you can just delete all these. These are like two different conditional brackets or whatever. But it leaves you with these uh, this extra parentheses, and you don't need that. So you can just go ahead and get rid of that. And now, as you'll see, it'll look like, and this is the guy who actually made the program, it'll look exactly like that, okay? Or you can just delete the whole thing, copy and paste this, and put it in. But regardless, that's all you need to edit here. So don't mess up with anything else. Hit apply and be done, okay? That's that. Now, uh, that's step two. So once again, open the game in RPG Maker. Make sure you have that, that whole situation set up. Open the script editor, which is on the top, uh, top like it's in the middle, right next to the music note up there. Uh, Poke Battle, Battle is the script set you're looking for. Navigate to the line uh, that's currently 138 for me on this, but won't be the same for you. With the, you can 
uh, find it by using Control F with snag balls, and then delete the part of the line that makes it so snag balls can be thrown at shadow Pokemon, which will make them be able to be thrown at every Pokemon. All right? So that will now allow you to remove the opposing trainer's Pokemon and add them to your party. If you don't do that, you cannot do this. Okay. And now finally, step three is adding a snag machine. Now, this is something that I'm not sure if you need. Uh, the reason I believe you need it is because in Pokemon Rejuvenation, it's set up in a way that you can't actually catch Shadow Pokemon until one of the main characters gives you the option to do it. So I believe it's needed uh, because at that point, the main character gives you the script, essentially. But I don't actually know if it's needed in a game that doesn't feature Shadow Pokemon. Like if he edited something about the script. Because frankly, I'm not, I don't know much about how to do all this. I'm just doing it. I've taught myself how to do it. So I'm kind of learning at a base level here and kind of just going piece by piece. So I don't know if this is needed. But regardless, I'll show you how to do this anyway. Okay. So in order to add the snag machine, all you need to do is go to any part of the game that you're definitely going to run into and add this script, which I'm going to be putting up on the screen now. Okay, uh, let me just still on. Um, so anyway, the I'll put it on the screen uh, in post. I guess this is the best option. So anyway, sorry about that. But regardless, yes, the it's Pokemon Global Snag Machine equals true. It'll be on the description and in the screen. So you need to add that to any event. So for example, in this game, the event that uh, we could do is this one here. Just add it to this, uh, just insert, right? Right click and insert, or just press the enter button and then go to the third page and the script, okay? And just copy uh, what I have in the description in here. So it's Pokemon Global Snag Machine equals true. And that's that, okay? Hit okay. And now when you talk to this guy, Right, interact with him in whatever way you're going to do it, he's going to give you the snag machine, but he's not even going to acknowledge it. It's just the script's going to happen and nothing else will be changed. So you could actually make your own NPC if you want to do that, make your own event, it doesn't matter. But the best way to do it is just make sure it's involved in something that the character has to go through 100% of the time. Uh, or you could also set it up to run as a parallel process, but this is the easiest way to do it instead of teaching you guys how to make events and all that stuff with this. This is the easiest way to do it. It's just to edit a previous event. Uh, we could also edit you know, the main character's uh, interaction with the, the professor, something like that. Same deal here. Uh, just insert and then go to script and then add it again. Okay. And now the second you talk to Professor Oak in this version of Pokemon Essentials, whatever this is, he's going to turn the snag machine on for you. So hopefully everybody understands that. You just need to make it so it happens no matter what, because if you somehow miss it, you won't be able to do this, provided that this is actually required for the game you're playing. I'm not 100% sure. But that's that. Step four I have here is kind of like an extra step, but this is it. Now, if you understand all of these three steps, you can do what I've been doing. But uh, for the layman's out there, step four is a reminder that you must also be playing the game in the folder that we created, okay? So you cannot, you have to make sure that you are playing the game in this folder. We've edited the files that are contained in this folder. And the reason I'm making such a big point about this is because I know a lot of people will then go back to their original Pokemon Reborn folder and do it that way instead. And they'll be like, oh my God, it didn't work. It didn't work at all. It's because you have to play the game with the connections to the files that we edited. So you need to make a separate folder to do this. Like I said, you know, create a Pokemon Essentials, uh, download the thing, and then drag the Pokemon Reborn or whatever game you want to drag into this folder, copy and remove the old files, like, you know, overwrite them, just like we did in the first tutorial, and you're all set. All right. And that's it. So as long as you know you have the game in this, all you then need to do is press this button here and it's going to open and it's going to be incredibly loud. But regardless, that's what you want. Okay, sorry about that. But yeah, so that's that. Oh, actually, yeah. anyway, so that's that. Just open that folder, uh, open the game within that folder, and you can now play the edited version of the game. Now, there's also something else that I've been doing uh, so I can show you guys how to do this too, okay? Uh, you could actually permanently add the debug menu, which is available, like I showed in the previous tutorial, uh, in the test version of the game. 
you could actually add that to the playable version of the game to make sure that you could always uh, add the debug stuff a as you go instead of having to set up a save and then transfer it over and then you're stuck with that. So the way to do that is go back into the script editor, okay, and go to settings. Uh, the first one, the very one on the top, okay, it's the settings option up there. And you're just going to add, I'm going to show you here, add this. So you just go to the front, the first line, okay, press the enter button to advance one line, and then add this to the top, the topmost line. Dollar sign debug space equals space true. And once again, I'll have this in the description for you guys, okay? But yeah, that's that. Uh, add that to the game, apply that, save that, and now when you play the game, it is once again going to have all of the stuff we edited. So we'll have the previous three steps plus that one there. And you'll be able to access the debug menu while you play the game. Uh, and you can do this with any game as well. It, this doesn't even, it, this is not in any way tied to the actual editing to catch Pokemon. Uh, you could put the debug menu in any game that you have the access to the PBS for. So for example, if you just want to play Pokemon Reborn through again, and you, uh, you know, the, the, the cool thing about the debug is you can actually heal your Pokemon and use the PC box anywhere in the game. You could even add Pokemon. You could do everything that you would possibly imagine. You could do this with the debug menu. So if for some reason you want to mess around with that, you can do that too. It's not dependent on this. So that's everything. Uh, I think we got it all. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, I hope this is exactly what you guys have been looking for. A lot of people have been asking this question about how to actually do this, so I'm glad to have finally done it. But yeah, once again, I will answer every single question that is in in lucid manner, all right? Uh, but I hope to help you out with this. And if not, just let me know, and we'll, uh, we'll definitely address it for you, all right? So thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.